showing here. That's disappointing. All right, so we're playing around in MATLAB. There's a big surprise. <coughs> you have a new homework um, that's due, I guess, a week from today. It's a couple of problems, linear algebra problems. Shouldn't, shouldn't be too, too demanding, I don't think. All right, so this, this should go pretty quickly. I'll give you more time for the exercise than usual. Um, not that I think it's very hard, but it's... Uh, Okay, because some of this we've already been doing. I think I mentioned that normally the classes and traditionally been taught where we do statistics first. So when I start introducing MATLAB, people have never created a vector in MATLAB or anything like that. But since you guys have done some of this, that's, some of this material should go pretty quickly. Um, so anyway, I can't see my screen, so I'm just waiting to move away from it. All right, so that's what we're going to talk about. Oh, we're not in projection mode. Oh, this is challenging. Let's see. Uh, okay. All right. So that's what we're going to talk about. <clears throat> uh, how to create matrices and vectors, which you kind of already know how to do. Matrix operations, most of which I think you kind of have an idea. I'll teach you something about matrix rank and how to calculate it in MATLAB. And then also introduce some numeric things in here. I think I mentioned you last time that <clears throat> when you start going to larger, more complicated problems, the efficiency and the accuracy of the things you do matter. It doesn't seem to matter as much for small problems, so I'll show you um, an example of that, of calculating matrix rank. And then I'm going to go through an example of doing Gauss elimination. It's not by hand, but it's almost by hand. So, in other words, I'm going to go through and do an example where I do all the operations you normally do on pen and paper in MATLAB row by row, just to show you how it would be done and give you some idea, <coughs> excuse me, of how to, um, you might write a code to do it. And then your exercise is to do basically the same thing on a diff different example. Okay? All right, so this will go quick. Hey, there's no one over here. Everyone knows that I like to walk over here, so now nobody comes over here anymore. That's cool. Because okay. now I can do this. This is actually, there's also a nice cool breeze blowing here. It's nice. All right. So here's how we create vectors. Everybody knows this at this point, right? I create a vector called x with these four components. If I want the output to be spit out to the screen, I don't put a semicolon and I get this, right? If I want to suppress the output, I put a semicolon. So typically, if you know what you're doing, you put a semicolon. If you want to see what you're doing to make sure it looks like what you want, then you don't, okay? So this creates a row vector. This creates a column vector. A, a more efficient way actually to create this column vector would be to write this, then put a prime at the end. So that means transpose, which I guess I'll talk about in a minute. So this is one way to, this normally, this, wow, this is how you create a row vector. This is one way to create a column vector. You can also create a column vector by putting a prime right there. Here's a matrix, right? You separate the rows of the matrix with a semicolon. So it says I want to create a matrix A with the first row of those two, three elements and the second row of those three elements. It looks like that. If you put the semicolon in a different place, you get a different matrix, right? In this case, you're saying I want to create a matrix that has three rows and two columns, and those are the first row, second row, and third row. All right. Um, these are things that you may or may not have seen. These are special things that are built into MATLAB. If you want to make a um, vector or a matrix of all ones for any reason, um, you use this command. You might recall I did use this command one time because when we did linear regression, I had to create a column of all ones because it was required. Otherwise, it made the intercept go through zero. So this says, there's a function called ones, and it says, I'd like to create a matrix of ones. That matrix is going to have three rows and one column, also known as a column vector. Or I could do a row vector by using this command, one row, three columns. I can do things, same thing with this command called zeros. So if I want to create either a, ve a column vector or a row vector of zeros, I could use this command zeros. How do you know these commands exist? You don't. Um, unless you used them, right? Once you use them, they know they existed. So if something's really simple, I usually do it myself, but if what, after I start getting annoyed, <clears throat> then I will often Google. I'll, I'll put in some Google thing, and then I'll get a MATLAB hit, and then I'll, that's how I often find things if I don't know it. Okay, this ones and zeros in addition to vectors and um, row vectors and column vectors and create matrices. This creates a matrix of ones of two rows and three columns. Same thing with the zeros, okay? And then there's this command here. 
um, that creates an identity matrix of any dimension you want. So I meaning identity, you give it the dimension you want. So by definition, the identity matrix is square. So you only need one dimension. And it creates an identity matrix of whatever size you want. All right? OK. So these are some of the manipulations you can do. You create a, a row vector like this. OK? And then if I want to create the transpose of this, in other words, <clears throat> I want it to be a column vector instead of a row vector, I can issue this command, x prime. And then I just want to call that thing xt for x transpose. This is just what I chose to call it. That gives me that. Same thing with the matrix. You can create a matrix A like this. And if you want to create the transpose of that matrix, you hopefully remember what the transpose of a matrix is. It means I exchange the rows and the columns. So I can just issue this command. Create the transpose by just issuing this command A prime and I get this. Right? The first, what was the first row has become the first column and what was the second row had become the second column. All right, I can create two matrices A and B like this. So these are two by three matrices, two rows, three columns, same dimension, and now I can add them. Right? And for this to make sense, you have to add matrices of the same dimension. If you try to add matrices that are not the right dimensions, MATLAB will tell you. It'll give you an error message and say the dimensions of A and B are not consistent with each other. So they are consistent, so I can create C, which is A plus B, and get this. Or I could create C, which is A minus B, which miraculously is this. That's not an omen or anything. <laughs> it's going to be a pretty crappy lecture, obviously. Um, it just, it's just the way I created these matrices. No intent there. Um, you can multiply matrices, assu assuming they have the right dimension. So here I've created an A matrix. It has three rows and two columns. If I want to multiply it by another matrix, let's call it the B matrix, then that has to have the same number of rows as A has columns. Right, so this has two columns. B better have two rows. You can have as many columns as you want, but it has to have two rows. And so then I can issue this command. This command says, please multiply the matrix A times matrix B and give me the matrix C back. Because this thing has three rows and this B has three columns, the resulting matrix is a three by three matrix. It looks like that. And obviously you can appreciate at this point, this is a lot easier than doing it by hand. And especially if, you know, if A and B were 10 by 10 matrices, you can't imagine doing that calculation by hand. So this is very convenient. Now if you specify the wrong dimension, which I do a lot by accident, and for example you have a matrix B that now is the same matrix here, but you accidentally create it such that there's three rows and two columns. That's no longer consistent to multiply with A, right? Because you need the number of rows here to be the same number of columns here, and that's not the case. Um, and so if you multiply them, you get this kind of thing. Okay, it's a very common error. I get this error every day, I think, because I've made a mistake with one of the matrices. So if you do, when I, as soon as I get this message, I start looking at the size of the two matrices to see what's wrong. Or equivalently, you could look in the right, right, you can look in the right hand side of the workspace where it gives the, all the variables in their dimension. And if you do this, you can immediately say, aha, the problem is the number of um, rows is here is not the same as the number of columns here. Okay. <coughs> all right. So you can create. You can also, we've introduced this idea, you can do element by element multiplication. So this means a lot, something a lot different than A times B. A times B means matrix multiplication. A dot, like this, so A dot asterisk means element by element multiplication. So in that case, A and B have to have the same dimension. And what I'm asking it to do is please take the 1, 1 element of A times the 1, 1 element of B and create a 1, 1 element of C. So element by element, not regular matrix multiplication. All right, you can create a vector um, x like this. You can create, you can take this vector and multiply it by a scalar. And then in this case, you would get this. You can do the same thing with a matrix. Create this matrix here. You want to create a new matrix C that is just two times the matrix A. You can do that. It's easy enough to do. Okay, so that's just multiplication of a matrix or vector by a scalar. All right, so matrix rank. Right? So this is the thing I told you last time. You remember last when I talked about matrix rank, I said if you want to check the rank of a matrix, what you can do is that Gauss elimination. You remember that? We talked about it yesterday. Do all those manipulations on the rows, and then you'll get that row echelon form, and then you can look at the structure of that row echelon form as a matrix we called R, and you can deduce the rank from that. 
it's pretty laborious, especially if the matrix is big. So we did three by three problems and they were not too bad. But obviously as the matrix grows, it's not nearly as much fun. So this command in MATLAB called rank of A, so it says it provides an estimate, which I'll explain, of the number of linearly independent rows or columns of matrix A. In other words, it calculates the rank of the matrix A. You might say, why does it provide an estimate and not the exact value? Because if the matrix is ill-conditioned, which we'll talk about soon, I think next week, then it may be hard to determine the rank. Okay, so I think we've talked about an example kind of like this, but um, <coughs> if you have a matrix that looks like this, just for the sake of illustration here, Okay, this matrix is rank two, right? Because these, ro this, these two rows are linearly independent from each other, but they're close to being linearly dependent, you agree? If I multiply this thing by one, I get very close to this, okay? So strictly speaking, the rank is two, but you know, when these things become very close to becoming linearly independent, this doesn't, two by two problem, no problem. But if this becomes a hundred dimensional problem, hundred dimensional matrices, you start getting mat rows that look very similar to each other, then the actual rank might be a hundred, but you might calculate something less, and I'm about to show you that. that why, that's why it says estimate, okay? Because if the rows become very close to becoming linearly dependent, then you may not get the actual rank. Here's an easy one, though. So here's a nice, well-behaved matrix here. I'm going to talk about the property of these so-called ill-conditioned matrices next week. But here's a matrix, three by three. You create it, then you can calculate the rank, and it gives you back the answer. <clears throat> so that just says, this matrix has linearly independent columns and rows. It's full rank. The maximal rank recalls the dimension of the matrix, right? N by N matrix, three by three in this case. Maximal rank is three. Okay, looks good. Now, now sometimes when I do these slides, I have to put a fair amount on the material so the font gets a little smaller. Sorry about that. Um, so let's say that you give it this matrix. Okay, so this matrix exactly same as the previous matrix, except I changed that number from an eight to a seven. Otherwise, same matrix. So there it is. Calculate the rank. It says now the rank is two. Okay. So what that means is that one of these rows is linearly, well, two of these rows are um, dependent, independent of each other and the third row is linearly dependent on the other two. Or same thing with the columns. Only two of these columns are linearly independent. So I know that's true because the rank is two, okay? But all I'm doing here is showing you the problem which we illustrated in class as well. So if I take, so first of all, I'm trying to show you, if you want to index a matrix, what does this thing do here do? It says, please give me, so the matrix A, please give me the first row all elements. So in other words, please tell me the first row of the matrix A. That's what that command does. It tells you one, two, three, the first row. If you want the first column, then you put colon, comma, one. That'll give you the first column, okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm proving to you the following, that the this third row is linearly independent on the first two rows because if I take the first row, multiply it by two, add it to the second row, and subtract off the third row, it's all zero. That tells you the third row is nothing but two times the first row plus the second row. You can see that, right? Take this row times two and add it to this row and you get the third row, okay? So the problem is that if the, this is, if someone asked me if this matrix is full rank, I'd be like, I. I don't know. Right. I, the only reason I know to look for this is because MATLAB told me this. <laughs> Once MATLAB told me this, and I'm like, oh, I bet it's linearly independent. So obviously, if this matrix gets big, you're not going to want to try to figure out why it's not full rank, but Ma MATLAB will tell you that it is. Okay. You may recall that you wrote this function. It was one of the exercises I had you do in class. It created this Hilbert matrix. Um, and this is one of the exercises that I gave you in the class about, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago. And Hilbert matrix is this matrix, it's square, and it looks a little something like this. So it's one here, and then 
these two numbers are one half and I didn't draw this big enough and then these numbers here are one third and it just goes on like this for whatever dimension you want, okay? So that thing about, and it's, it, we usually call it H, okay. Hilbert matrix, okay. So what's interesting about the Hilbert matrix, the Hilbert matrix is a matrix, as I'll talk to you later, is an ill-conditioned matrix, meaning as this matrix gets large, some of the rows and columns become almost linearly dependent on each other. That's why people care about the Hilbert matrix. Classic example of what they call ill-conditioned matrix. Okay? So what I've done here is kind of illustrate that point. So first of all, I created the 3x3 three three Hilbert matrix using this function I created. I won't go back, but you were supposed to have done this, so you, you probably have this available. So if I issue this command, it gives me back a matrix A that's the 3x3 three three Hilbert matrix. Right? That's the one-halves, the one-third, the one-quarters, one-fifth. Okay? All right, then I say, what's the rank of the 3x3 three three Hilbert matrix? And it's 3. That's kind of what I expect. All right, now I create the 10x10 10 10 Hilbert matrix. I don't want to print it out to the screen because it's too big, so I suppress the output and I calculate the rank of that and it's 10. Right, so it's like this is not very exciting. <laughs> now I create the 15x15 15 15 Hilbert matrix. Now I calculate the rank of that and it tells me it's 12. Okay, I can tell you the actual rank of that matrix is 15 but it's so close to having three linearly independent columns or rows that MATLAB tells you it thinks the rank is 12, okay? It's numerics, right? Once you do things numerically, then you have to deal with round off error and approximations because the computer has finite arithmetic. And based on that, when you start getting problems like this, you know, that's why it explicitly tells you it's an estimate. If the problem is small, it'll be the right number, but if the problem is big and the problem is naughty, this is a big naughty problem, then you're just going to get an estimate of what the rank is. Okay? But this matters because um, if somehow you're trying to solve an equation that looked like this, you know, Hilbert matrix times x equals b, and the Hilbert matrix was this, you know, 15 by 15 one I just created, you're not going to be able to solve it. Because the, the matrix H is just too poorly conditioned. So you don't really have, you don't really have 15 equations essentially. So you're not gonna, it's not gonna work, okay? We'll talk more about that later. Okay, so let's say you were um, interested in developing a code that did Gaussian elimination. You remember the whole idea of Gaussian elimination, right? We take a matrix like this one. So here's a problem we want to solve. There's our matrix A and there's our vector B. And what we'd like to do is solve this set of linear equations. There's three equations and three unknowns, right? And at this point we, we suspect that there exists a solution that's unique. You don't, you don't know that for sure until you do the Gaussian elimination, but that's what we assume. And so the first step in doing this is you form the augmented matrix, right? And then we're going to take this augmented matrix and we're going to try to put it in triangular form. Normally what we try to do is do row operations on this augmented matrix so that that element, that element, and that element becomes zero. Then we have a new matrix. Sorry, I don't know how many times I'm going to do this. Maybe not too many more. So we take the original problem which looks like AX equals B. We perform ro these row operations then we end up with a new problem that according to the book they like to write like this. This is the reduced echelon form. We get a new matrix R that's triangular and we change, so we've changed, essentially changed the A matrix to R and the B vector to F. It's the same equations. Haven't changed the answer, it's just easier to find the answer here. Okay, and this R has a triangular structure and so now you can easily solve the problem, right? That's what we talked about last time. Okay, so let's say that um, I wanted to write a code that did this. You understand? So if I write a code that solved this problem, that code would do the following. It would take the matrices A and B, someone would give me the matrices A and B, and then I just give them back the answer X. Okay? So if I wanted to, I'm not going to ask you to do that because that's a little bit more than I think is reasonable. But the first thing I would do personally is I would try to do, I would try to figure out what I'm going to need to code. Okay? So I would do an example by hand 
in MATLAB, like, oh, you multiply this row, and now I, I got to write a code that does that for any size matrix and make sure that this pivot doesn't become zero, and all the other ancillary things you might worry about that are the details. So what I'm doing here is just going through an example of how you do Gaussian elimination, all these row operations in MATLAB. You understand you wouldn't do this to solve a problem, but it's something you might do at the beginning of wanting to write a code to understand what you're gonna, the code needs, is going to need to do. Okay? So that's what I'm doing. And that's what you're going to do too in a second. So let's do this quickly. So there's my matrix A. So I'm just going to form the augmented matrix to do that. First of all, I have to create the matrix A. There it is. I have to create the vector B, the right-hand side over here. There it is. And now I com compute, now I create this augmented matrix. I'm going to call this A1 because every time I do an operation on the matrix, I'm going to call the new augmented matrix A2 and then A3 and A4 and so on. Okay. So at this point, the matrix I'm going to call A1 and it's just this A augmented with B and it looks like that. Just like that. Okay. Now what I want to do, as we know, is I want to make that element zero and that element zero. So what do I need to do? The same thing I did analytically. I need to take this row, multiply it by five-thirds and add it to that row. Right? That'll make that zero. And if I take this row and multiply it by four-thirds and add it to that row, that'll make that element right there zero. That's the first thing I do. This, this is the command in MATLAB to do it. <coughs> So what does this say? It says I'm going to create a new matrix um, called A2. The first row is not going to change. So this is the first row of A1 is also going to be the first row of A2. It's not changing. Okay? What is the second row of my matrix A2 going to consist of? Well, I'm going to take my first row of A1, multiply it times 5 thirds and add it to the second row. That's just what I said I would do. Right? And then the third row is going to consist of take the, the first row of the original matrix times four-thirds and add it to the third row. And so what that does is it creates this. So all it did for the first row is repeat the first row of A1. <laughs> okay. The second row is the result of this calculation which was done explicitly to make that number zero. Okay. And then the, th the third row is this calculation here which is done to make that element zero. Now I got this matrix which I call A2. Okay. Okay. Well, now what I need to do is make that element right there zero. Okay. So what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply, so that's one third and that's two thirds. So I guess I better multiply this by minus one half and add it to this row. Right? If I do that, that'll make this thing zero. So I'm going to create a new matrix called A3. I'm going to leave the first two rows alone. They're the same as the rows of A2. And then I'm going to create a new row, new third row that's minus one half times this row and add it to that row and that'll make that zero. Okay? Same thing we did analytically. The reason you wouldn't do this, because this really isn't much easier than doing it analytically, except you won't make any mistakes. Right? All right, well, there's your triangular form, right? So now I have, there's the R, what I call the R matrix, and that's what I call F there. Okay? So now I need to compute the solution. So this element here is the 3, 3 element of A3. So I don't feel like writing on the board anymore. <laughs> All right. So this is, the, this is the 3, 3 element of the matrix A3, and that's called B3. So if I want to know what, so you understand this, this equation says 0.5x3 equals minus 1. Obviously, you can figure out what x, what it is. It's 2 minus 2, right? But if you want to actually calculate it from the matrix to calculate the value x3, you take that number and divide by that number. And that's all I've done here. I've taken actually, yeah, I've taken um, in the matrix A3, sorry, I have to go back here. The matrix A3, third row, fourth element is that number. And I've, multi I've divided it by the 3, 3 element of A3, which is that number. That gives me X3 minus 2. Okay? All right. Once I have that, now I can use the next equation to calculate X2. This equation says two-thirds x2 plus one-third x3 equals one and one-third. Okay? So to calculate the value of x2, what I first of all need to do is bring the x3 over on the other side, right? Because I already know its value. And then I need to divide by this number right here. And then I'll get the value for x2. This is just solving individual equations. <coughs> That's what I've done here. Right? I've taken the value on the right-hand side, which is this. I've taken the term involving x3 
Uh, oh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Okay, mercifully so. That's the term on the right-hand side. I'm taking the term involving x3 onto the right-hand side, and then I'm dividing by the diagonal element, which multiplies x2 to get x2. And then you might imagine something similar to find x1, right? I know x2 and x1. Sorry, I know x2 and x3, so now I solve this equation for x1, right? This equation is 3x1 minus 2x2 plus 2x3 equals minus 1. So I'm just going to put everything on the right-hand side and then divide by 3. That's what this thing right here does, and that gives me the answer 3. And then when I'm all done, I put these all in a vector, and that's what, that's what the code would do. It would perform all those calculations and return that vector x. Okay? All right. So the real point of this exercise is not to convince you um, that you want to do this as much as it gives you a lot of experience on doing all these calculations involving matrix rows and elements and things like that. Okay? So that brings us to your job. Your job is to do the following. So, so this is a very similar problem. You need to solve this problem. Okay? You see it? There's a little trick here, obviously. <laughs> which I'll explain in a minute. So, so to solve this system of equations for x1, x2, and x3, basically doing the same thing I just did. That's the goal, okay? Now hopefully, you're gonna realize that with a zero here, you might wanna switch some rows before you begin, <laughs> right? So you get the idea, you're gonna take this matrix, you're gonna create an A matrix, you're gonna create a B vector, you're gonna put them together to form the augmented matrix, and then you're gonna go through a series of calculations just like I just did, and you're gonna to try to figure out what the answer is. And because um, I'm running a little low on Altoids, I'm, I'm offering this Coke to the first person who, it's pretty tasty, all right? Um, only 300 calories per bottle. Um, you know, how about this? You know. You know, when I was a kid, they used to have cans. You go into 7-Eleven or Circle K, you know these places? They have cans of Coke, the 12 ounces, right? Now you're lucky if you can get a 20-ounce thing. Sometimes you go in there, 32 ounces of Coke? Give me a break. Like, I don't want to be a Coke addict. I just want to drink. All right. Um, all right. So your goal, now that I've railed against co uh, Coke, is to do the following. Solve, solve this problem, okay? And try to basically do the same thing I did before. So maybe what I'll do is once I'm convinced everyone has formed the matrix, this augmented matrix A tilde, I'll switch it back to a slide that at least gets you started on the calculations that you perform. And again, let me check the temperature of this Coke. I suspect somebody left it here recently. Yeah, it's mildly cold. It's not, it's not gonna be bad, all right? Um, other than the fact the person might have some transmittable disease that we're not aware of. Okay, so give it a shot. If you have a problem, let me know. I can tell you what the answer is. Well, when someone has an answer, let me know. Then I'll tell you what I think the answer is. Okay, I'll give you one more minute. At least form the, at least form the augmented matrix. <laughs> see if you can, see if we can start with this. Form the matrix A and form the matrix B and then augment A with B as the last column. And call that matrix A1, let's say. So actually if I was smart, I would just write these on the board. So what is it? 0, 8, 2 minus 0, 8, 2, 3, 5, 2, 26. Okay, so that's the problem. And you want to start by doing that right there. I got my guide through. I, I see. I see. I think your wills, your wills are are not good. Your desire, your hunger to solve this problem seems to be ebbing at a pretty low level. So I'm going to guide you through it. So you want to do the same thing with your matrix A and B, 
which is written up there in a terrible disjoint fonts. But um, you want to do the same thing for that problem as I did here. Form the matrix A and form the matrix B and then form the augmented matrix. Okay? And once you do that, you're going to obviously realize that um, the first row of your augmented matrix has a zero there. That's not that useful for multiplying to eliminate these two elements. So you probably don't want that to be your first row. Okay. So what I would suggest you do is switch these two rows. Create a new matrix A2 where this is the first row and that's the last row. Okay. And once you do that, then you should have an augmented matrix that looks like this. Not that you need me to tell you. This is one of those exercises that should convince you, thank God people write codes for me so I don't have to do this. Okay, once you switch the first row and the first column, you get a new matrix and I would call that matrix, let's say A2 if you want, because A1 is the first augmented matrix and then A2, switch the two rows. Okay, now once you switch the two rows, you know the game. Create a, create a new, now I'll go here, create a new matrix called A3, okay, that consists of making these two elements zero. This element's already zero, so it's not a lot of work. I would suggest multiplying this row up times minus one half and adding it to that row. Just kind of mimicking what I did up there. And in fact, since, since I'm actually bored right now, I can just do it myself, I think. I'd like to think I can. Someone's probably done it and you can check my answer. So multiply by this minus one half and add. So... Is that, is that the second row if you do this? Somebody did it? <laughs> Not a single person can move faster than me by hand. I'm already done. Well, hey. This is, this is a problem you probably don't want to admit you're done first on. Because we could actually mandate you drink the Coke. Okay, it should look like that, I think, right? Can someone validate that's what it looks like? Someone just say yes, please. Or, or no. Okay. All right, so that looks promising, right? So if you were to get this, which I think is the right answer, you should, you should get a new matrix A3 in MATLAB that looks just like this. Then obviously what you want to do is eliminate this element right there. So to do that, multiply this row times minus one half and add it to that row. And if you get that, 